tell me for a patient who thinks, okay, I need not just lateral expansion, but I need forward expansion. And that's why I want to do AGA because I want forward expansion or I, that's why I think I need surgery because MSC isn't going to expand me forward. What orthodontic tools do you have to give some forward expansion? And specifically, I'd like you to talk about whether or not you, um, how you feel about the SFOT for forward expansion, SFOT and Invisalign okay. um, as an option. No. no, this is what's going on. The forward expansion by simply expand with MNC, you get a minor forward movement according to research. I think it's under one millimeter, okay. In my opinion, probably half a millimeter, slight forward movement, okay. You do get your mid-face enhancement, okay. So if it's appearance-wise, uh, this forward movement sometimes is not necessary just after the MSC, okay. Now, the forward movement usually what we do is by using reversible headgear or people sometimes call it face mask, which is, I think, sounds kind of ugly, <laughs> okay? The reversible headgear, this term I like to use, is the one, the legitimate device that can actually pull your um, arm forward. But <clears throat> there's a couple restrictions. Those de devices work really well when patients are young, like your teenager or preteen or simply a kid, okay? Those work really well, okay? Now, when we go into adult, it goes into a gray area. With face mask, we're talking about. Face, yes. Yeah. Yes, with a face mask we're talking about. An adult, adult, I think Dr. Moon commented before, for kids, you can go up to six, seven millimeter four movement. For adult, the max is three, okay? So if you're a male, I will say, if you get two, you're lucky. And this would be like how many months, how many hours per day to get three now, millimeters? I recommend at least 14 hours, at least 14 hours. Okay, at least 14 hours a day. That's my recommendation. Um, for example, right now there's COVID going on, COVID-19 going on 24 seven. Okay, now the face, the face mask only work right after the expansion because the the, the theory behind it is once you expand it, all your suture become slightly loose. Then you'll be able to drag your maxilla forward slightly. Now, if you, if you don't drag at a proper time, the first month, then you put the potential of you moving the maxilla all of a sudden cut more than half. The second month, it just see what you can do. The third month, fourth month, forget about it. It's not gonna happen. Wow. So if you don't get that, then you lose a chance. So I always emphasize the patient, you want to avoid surgery, you want to try to work. The first month's very important. If you miss the window, you miss the window. That's really interesting. So the window starts when you stop expanding or it starts when you split the suture? Your bones start, start fusing again. Then that means you stop expanding. Then you the suture will start fusing together, then your chance of pulling forward is much less. So let's say you wanted 50 turns for a patient. Mm -hmm. You would start the reverse pull headgear after the 50th turn or you would start it? No, I would before? start during. You would start as soon as you see a diastema? Yes. And then you would continue for maybe one or two months after you stop yeah. turning? No, one technique that I use is for patient who slacking out the headgear, then I will intentionally overexpand them, have them continue wear headgear for another month or two, okay? And then I can back turn and make it go back in a little bit. You turn it backwards, actually. Turn it backward, yes. Wow, that's clever. To, to, to decrease it, or I can decrease it first and then increase it to play around with the suture. Hopefully that will help, but Honestly, for those patients who doesn't use headgear the first two months, chance of them using it again are very rare. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for those patients, I just be frank with them and say, hey, you don't use it, the treatment will fail. Treatment will fail, whether it will plan B or plan C. Okay. 
Plan C will be surgery. Plan B is I can maybe do some other stuff to the face to camouflage the look, but you're not going to get an ideal result. Okay. Yeah. So the long and the short That's of it is you don't, you don't like to move teeth forward. Um, there's not a there's not a great orthodontic option for moving teeth several millimeters forward. Moving teeth forward, if if I look at your cephalometric X-ray, if your teeth are relatively straight, not proclined, because properties have to have a proclination angle, then I will consider moving your teeth forward. Okay, if you can tolerate it, then yes. Okay, to make it a growth, there's not a growth. You basically just tipping your teeth outward. Right. Okay. Right. There's no growth about it. Mm -hmm. So for the severe cases of someone who really wants to come forward more, let's say they have a side profile and they, it's, it's too recessed and they want to come forward. And in, in a lot of cases, if they're not willing to do the face mask, uh, there are other things I can do. For example, if the face is not too long, yeah. it's a normal size face or a little square jaw, we can actually make the lower jaw rotate backward a little bit by increasing the facial height, so the jaw will, will clockwise rotate. So when the jaw clock, clockwise rotate, it will create an overgear and then we start sinking the bite in. Those are another trick I can use to correct some minor difference. I see. And do you have any thoughts on uh, surgically facilitated orthodontic therapy or wilcodontics? This idea of putting down new bone with corticotomies through a bone graft and then no. expanding forward? I think those idea are very popular pre-MSC. Okay. Pre-MSC, those ideas are very popular because they want to make the jaw, upper jaw wider. But again, you are actually moving your teeth into new bone. Yeah. Not really genuinely correct the structure or the function of the nasal cavity. Okay. Now, right now, the only condition I will use is with the lower. Okay. If the lower jaw is truly small, or patient have a lot of recession going on already, okay, then to upright those teeth might cause the recession worse. Then those are the patients I would legitimately concern to put the S do the SLOT so that so we at the same time we help to correct those um, recession issue at the same time. I see. Okay. So we don't worry about operating to lose, operating losing more, more uh, gum structure. Okay. I see. Now top one, it really doesn't have to because the MS, MSC. Now the other reason we consider FSOT is patient have a timeline to meet. They're getting married. They have to have braces out before a certain time. Then that's another one to make it go faster. Right. Right. So for the severe, severely recessed cases, this, the only, the real good way to get significant forward movement is through, still through surgery, you would say. There's yes. no MSE equivalent for forward no. expansion. Not yet. Yeah. Well, hey, maybe you'll uh, save the day, Dr. Ting. <laughs> we'll have to, we'll, uh, Get team you up with an engineer and, uh, and a venture capitalist and we'll get this thing going. <laughs>